This is an episode of the Lead Heads Podcast, a weapons and firearm podcast unlike any other. If you like what you hear, please consider subscribing or checking out our YouTube page. Work the trigger. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Lead Heads Podcast, episode 6. Top 5 Road Trip Guns. Hey everybody, welcome back to Lead Heads Podcast. Today we are going to be covering our top 5 road trip guns. These are guns that you would take on a road trip. A trip that you would take on the road. This is we we obviously thought this one out like very well before we uh, we got on here and started talking. Yes, absolutely. Just like so, every week. <laughs> that that's a that's a very good point. But I digress. Anyway, so these are going to be guns that are going to be convenient or maybe just fit into little niches that you would use on a road trip. I don't know about you guys, but when I go on a road trip, I think about things like that. Um, Builder and I have read one too many books. But it was a fantastic book. It was. It really was. If you have not read the book one second after, read it. Just read it. Do and it's going to make you look at a lot of things very differently. Uh, One of those things is going to be traveling and what happens when you're traveling and things go bad. One of those things is protection, obviously. Yeah, that that's just one of the things that you think about anyway on road trips. What if my vehicle breaks down and I have to walk a long distance, or what if you can never make it back home? So these are our top five guns (laughs) to be able to fit into that little niche. Um. Who do we want to go first? Didn't talk about this at all beforehand. I don't care. Mine are in no particular order this what? time. Whoa. Oh, bullshit. That's, That's what happens when you come up with them an hour before the show. That is a very good point. I actually came up with mine this afternoon, but as usual, I do not have an order. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go first this time around. Okay, in no particular order, I'm going to lead off with what I consider to be a pretty decent, well-rounded um, road trip gun. And that would be a Ruger 1022 takedown with the Magpul X22 backpacker stock. The X22 backpacker stock has the ability to carry extra magazines while it's taken apart. Um, it's a lightweight gun. It shoots 22. Um, you know, it's not. It's by far not the best defensive gun that you could ever imagine. But to just have a gun, if you're if you're going camping or doing something like that and you just want to have a gun with you in case a, a random raccoon tries to steal your um, s'mores or, or something a like that. Or, or a Bigfoot. You know, you could you could go back to the Bigfoot episode and reiterate the kel CP-33 and go ta-ta-ta-ta-ta real fast. Bug um, him like a bunch of bees. And I would probably also include with that a... I, I didn't decide on a red dot or a low-powered scope, but either would be on a very solid um, quick detach mount, so it could be not mounted to the receivers, and then quickly mounted, and you can trust that it's zeroed. So I think that makes sense. You'd, you'd, in today's market, you'd probably have more money in a mount than you would have in an optic. Definitely True. more money in the mount than you'd probably have in the gun. But uh, that is my first submission for a top five road trip gun. All right. Sorry, I just had to put in my bonus that I just thought of. And I do want to really quick cover a comment that we got on the top five Bigfoot guns (gasps) video. Um, Terry says, oh, yes, actually, there are Bigfoot reports from Indiana, mainly in southern Indiana. He's never seen one before. So I just want to point that out uh, before everybody judges me on my belief in Bigfoot. uh, They have been viewed in Indiana before and are a legitimate threat. Thank you very much. No comment. <laughs> All right. So, um, again, my, mine are also in no particular order. Uh, completely different reasons than Builder. I came up with mine considerably before the show. I just am very disorganized with this stuff. So my first one is going to be, I, and a lot of these are just generalizations. Uh, I don't know how yours are going from here on out because that one was relatively specific. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go with a 10.5 AR pistol. Um, now, I will accept two different calibers for this, 223, 556, obviously, mm-hmm. and I will accept 300 blackout. I know you're not a big fan of the blackout, but in a 10.5 length barrel, you 
get a really good option for suppressor ready and if you have a suppressor to take along with you that can be kind of set to the side awesome now uh the 10.5 the reason i went with 10.5 to me that's a better barrel length uh it's just when you go from seven seven in a 5.56 especially it just doesn't get a whole lot out of the round well it voids all the warranties on all the cans that you would ever put on it that too um, but it just doesn't get uh, as much out of the round. The 5.56 five, round thrives on velocity. You can't do low velocity 5.56. Five, I mean, you can, yeah, you but just, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. You got a spicy 22 Magnum, which 22 exactly. Magnum's still very viable, but it's not 5.56. Five, five, right. I mean, you can get a 22 Magnum pistol with that length of a barrel and take up significantly less space. Yeah. So if you're going to go AR, go with a viable caliber. Uh, that actually, this is going to come back here, here in a little bit when I go over one of my other ones. Um, See, I thought you were, your second caliper was for sure going to be 9mm. No, no it's not. And again, we'll, we'll cover that here in a little bit. Uh, but again, the, in the 300 Blackout, there, that round, I don't prefer that round, but I can also can't deny that that round is better than 9mm. Yes. If you're going to go with an AR platform and you're going to take up that space, get the best calibers that you can for that so 556 five, and 300 blackout are my answers for that in my opinion on 300 blackout has actually changed a little bit <gasps> i know i know you um, changed an opinion i did and that Who that opinion changed because <laughs> if you plan on hand loading your own ammo mm -hmm. 300 blackout's great there's no problem with it at all my problem is the fact that people will buy a 16 inch 300 blackout with no intent to ever put a can on it and they'll pay five times as much per shot as you do 76239 mm -hmm. or you know however much more it is and it's a ballistically inferior round yes it's close but it is ballistically inferior yes but if you hand load them yourself the cost gets a lot lower or if you're going suppressed yes because you can't the 762 by 39 they make subsonics but they are very hard to find yes. and from what i hear i don't i don't have any data to back this up but i hear that they're not as ballistically stable as the 300 blackout is subsonically hmm. um just the bullet shape and all that good stuff so but that's my that is my first one okay what do you got um so i have one that i'm going to save for last because okay. i don't think you thought about it <laughs> um so my second one i'm going to go straight down my is. list yeah my second one um is the good old trusty Glock 19. Okay. Reasons for that. One, it's a Glock. Two, That's it's 9mm. Um, the Glock 19 takes Glock 17 mags. Mm -hmm. um, Glocks are one of the most common pistols in the United States, I yep. would say. Um, the Glock 19 being maybe the most common out of all the Glocks. Um, the 17 being up there. Um, but the 19 gives you the ability to run the mags from the 17 yeah gives you the ability to run the mags from a 34 um gives you to the ability to run a stendo mag sorry stendo clip um <laughs> even the glock drums and um the chances of you being able to find another glock 19 magazine or at least ammo to fill your magazines mm -hmm. are pretty high and i would also say that you could couple that with the um the uh micro roni yeah um pistol brace adapter and you could have a a decent little personal defense weapon that would be i wish i had thought of the the PDW i just came adapter. up with that in my head just now uh, another thing uh the 19 you can technically put a 17 barrel in a 19 can't you no okay well see glock you screwed that one up <laughs> no, I like that though with the 19. I, I like those reasons uh, and I wish I had thought of that micro one. Either the um the like micro roni chassis one or just that brace one. Like yeah, any like the, of the, those. the flux brace yeah. or uh the uh the 2020 from Recover Tactical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like those. Good. So, my second one uh, and this is where we're going to get into why this caliber wasn't in my last choice <gasps> is a 9mm subgun. So I'm talking the Scorpion, the Streebog, uh, something something that folds and can fire when folded. 
So those are my two. Those are my two on this. So it's going to be kind of a, a self-contained recoil uh, mechanism up inside the actual frame of the firearm. No buffer tube systems, that kind of thing. And here is why: is because again, going back to what we were just talking about with the AR, if you are going to take up the footprint of an AR-15, have a solid round. No matter what, nine millimeter is inferior to 300 blackout and a 223. It's just not it as good of a defensive round. And because of that, if you're going to take up that square footage or that, that space, that footprint, run an actual round through it. So the only 9mm that I would say is do a sub gun because my Strebog, those things fold up to 18 inches overall length with an 8-inch barrel. Mm -hmm. You toss a even a 7-inch barrel on an AR is going to be over an 18-inch overall length. Yeah. So... That's that's why I'm going with that one. Uh, the the Strebogs, I like the ones actually more with the sliding stocks, the ones with the two bars that go up next to the receivers. Yes, the uh, telescopic. Yeah, um, because just the the overall um, the profile doesn't change at all, but the thickness does. Yes, you can toss that under something significantly easier. I don't I don't know if the Scorpions got something like that. I would assume I, that it I would. believe they do. Um, I'm sure it's expensive as all hell, but I mean, the, they are the for one the street for the, Yeah, yeah. They're they're what like three four hundred bucks? I think they're right around three. Okay, yeah, that's not that's a lot of money. <laughs> it but is. Um, and uh, to backtrack a little bit on the AR side, I don't I don't like PDW stocks the short recoil systems for ARs, unless you're running like a nine millimeter round, in which case I. would don't think you should run a full caliber. They just the recoil impulse is too uncomfortable yeah. for those short recoil yeah. systems. That's my number two. Okay. Uh, so my number three, um, mine's my list is adapting as I go. Um, <laughs> it is a ten and a half inch AR fifteen pistol. Okay. Uh, specified pistol, and what's ad adapting on mine is it wasn't just five five six, but I'm I'm going to go ahead and say five five six or seven six two thirty nine. Um, 7.6239 is a, Eater. it's a healthy round. It, it is. It, it's got a good thump to it. And in AR-15 pistol ranges, what I would consider a pistol range, mm -hmm. you know, inside 200 yards, um, 7.6239, that's, that's where it's making money. Yeah. I mean, that, it's just, that's it. That's its job right there. And, and I think that's a good thing to, to look at is with these truck guns, we are not looking long range precision with these. No. These are get your butt home guns. Mm -hmm. Something that is shorter range, able to be used to gain you that distance, but also you're not looking to pretend to be a sniper. Yes. Um, so I also specified AR-15 pistol. Mm -hmm. um, I, given the choice between a pistol and a registered SBR, I am 100% pro SBR. I, mm -hmm. you know, yep. not necessarily the registration part, but a rifle is better than a, a rifle stock is yes. better than a pistol brace. Absolutely. My reason yes. for saying pistol is I can transport my AR-15 pistol across state lines yep. without asking the federal government if it's okay. Um, totally makes sense. That being said, I also like vertical foregrips. Mm -hmm. I sacrifice that and I sacrifice a stock for the ability to travel easier. But um, if it's a truck gun, that's a very important thing is the ability to travel. Yes. So, um, it's going to need a good optic on it of some sort. Uh, I'm going to say a, a decent red dot. I have a mag. If if I were to have an AR-15 pistol, it would have a magnifier behind the red dot. Um, and also, more important than that, you can run iron sights as long as you got a light on that thing. Mm -hmm. You got to have a light on it. I don't. I don't care if you're running a long gun. It needs a light on it. Period. So. I differ from you slightly. I would probably go LPVO. Something lower, like in the 1-4 to four range. Uh, not a high one, because as you go up higher in LPVOs, your sight box shrinks considerably. Notice that. And, yeah. <laughs> and because of that, I like the wider sight box that you get with the lower end LPVOs. But because you get the distance out of an AR pistol, I mean, AR pistols, 5.56... Five, is still solid out to three and four hundred yards. Yes. Which you can't identify something. You can hit things at that distance, but you can't identify something at that distance. Right. So I would like an LPVO for that. Again, one to four. Four power is 
maybe not optimal for that distance, but it is better than absolutely nothing. And when pulled back, those fours have a, a pretty nice and forgiving sight box with a wide angle, uh, wide picture angle. So, and that's kind of where I, I differ too. I have I have three different setups. I have a, mm -hmm. a red dot on one firearm. I have a red dot with a magnifier on another firearm, and I have an LPVO on another. And just the overall size and bulkiness of the LPVO and the size and bulkiness of the magnifier, if I was to do it all again and ha and build a 10.5 in 5.56 mm -hmm. to be my truck gun, dot only, no magnification. Really? Period. Yeah. Streamline, nothing to hang up. Just save some weight, man. That's true, because there is a high likelihood I... I you're not going to be taking 200-yard shots, you're going to be taking 10-yard shots. And you're going to be walking a very long ways. Yeah. I say high likelihood, that's a really dumb thing to say. High likelihood in a low likelihood situation. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, so my next one is, again, a generalization. It is a full-size pistol. Uh, something minimum of 9mm. Uh, minimum of 15 rounds. I say 15 because I am taking 40 into consideration. You can do 40, you can do 45. If you're doing 45, don't think a 1911 is a solid choice just because of the lack of capacity and you're looking at something that you may not find bullets for a while. Uh, now, one thing about that, so basically it's something like a Glock 17 or a, P a CZP 10F. Now, you get bonus points here if your truck gun takes the same mags as your carry gun so that you get that cross compatibility and you can swap, you basically gain the extra for your carry gun in your truck gun. So if you carry a, for instance, a P10, for me, I would toss a P10F and a bunch of mags in the truck, and then I would have those P10F mags to be able to swap into my uh, P10C. That's pretty fair. So I kind of went the opposite direction of you, and I like the way that you went with yours with the mag compatibility, because honestly, the, that is the smarter way to go, but I didn't want to amend halfway through. <laughs> um, but to be fair, I run a Glock and you run a CZ. We yeah. we were thinking two different ways, right? And uh, but I like I like what you were thinking about compatibility. If you had to go find magazines, mm -hmm. because you're going to have a way easier time finding those magazines than I would for the full size, because I'd be limited to the full size. Now, granted, I would have the compact on me, but I digress. I mean, that's yeah. Yeah, you you get you've got the best of everything, and I've kind of got. A little bit of everything so that's why I'm gonna go with those I, I I think those make a very good viable option all right so my number four um, is my ideal truck gun so work already knows what this is but it is a Marlin 336 C um, sorry I'm trying to look up the exact barrel length I was not prepared slacker so the, three thirty, nice things. the 336C is the youth model of the 336. Hmm. Um, it's only available in 3030, not 35 Remington. Okay. Um, Aww. I know. So um, you could actually find the round, though. <laughs> I mean, yes and no, but... Well, that's true. They're two about $2.50 um, a piece right now. Yeah. I can't find the barrel length. I don't care that much. Don't worry about um, it. The 336C has a shorter barrel. Um, okay. has a lower mag capacity because yep. of that. Um, it also comes with a shorter stock, but, Ooh. but, but the stock would be replaced. Um, it would get a Boyd's of some sort, laminated stock, and it would get the tactical rail. I know I'm very much against lever guns with a tactical rail, but I am very pro. Yes. I'm very pro long gun with a light on it. So if I want to run a light, I'm gonna to have to have a rail, and um, those things look badass with a rail. I'm well, sorry. Well, and do. the the round caddies or whatever they're mm -hmm. called, um, the round oh, holders yeah. that you can put on your rail. That's a nice little bonus. Yep. And in that particular case, I would put an LPVO on it. Mm -hmm. um, a red dot would be acceptable, but an LPVO gives me the ability to stretch out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely a stretch out gun. I mean, it. it uh, I, same as seven six two thirty nine. Yeah. You know, thirty thirty. If you practice with it, and you know your drops, and you know all this stuff, and you know your distances to your targets, it it's got plenty of power at three hundred yards. Mm -hmm. 
you you don't need to be stretching 30 30 that far it's a, a 200 and inside mm-hmm. inside 200 yard gun but again um, but it's also fairly accurate at that 200 yards. And the other thing I like about the Marlin 336 or the lever gun in general is it's not an AR-15. <laughs> it, That's fair. It's not some big scary black gun. It's just mm-hmm. is that is that a lever action? Oh, okay. You know, whatever. Well, Jim Bob's got a lever gun in his truck. You know, um, it doesn't give off the the Good negative appeal that mm-hmm. an AR-15 does. Yeah, it doesn't gain, uh, gain the attention. Exactly. People aren't going to be drawn to it as much. And I would, I would, the only gun that I would supplement that for would be a uh, 1895 guide gun mm-hmm. would be acceptable as well. The guide gun has the 18 inch barrel. Okay. Um, it's the jumpy one. What, um, what caliber is that one? 33 again? The 1895. Yeah. It's in 4570. Okay. Oh yeah, that's duh. Okay. So I'm actually going to piggyback on that one because I accidentally <laughs> skipped this one earlier. Um. It's my my notes are very small, so um, I am also going to go with a lever gun, uh, eighteen inch for me, eighteen inch minimum barrel length, and it's got to be in a non pistol caliber. I, for this particular instance, I wouldn't go with a, even a three fifty seven magnum or a forty four magnum. I would want something in the forty uh, forty five seventy, the thirty thirty. I would even accept the bottom mag-fed uh, .30-06 and 308 variants. Mm-hmm. Those are solid guns. Now, the reason that I like it is, again, going off of your kind of conspicuous inconspicuousness. Sorry to tag back in real, yeah. real quick. 16 tag, inch tag, bar- tag 16-inch barrel and 5 plus 1 on the 336 Youth. Okay, so, no, that's a solid... 5 plus 1 is a solid number. It's fair. Because I was going to say... I would say no less than four plus one. And you wouldn't even have to change the stock. That's true. <laughs> um, so one, uh, again, one of the things that I like is that it's inconspicuous. It doesn't gander that attention. The thing about lever actions is they are thin comparatively to other firearms like AR-15s, the sub guns that we're talking about. They are a very thin form factor, which means they can fit under stuff or behind seats really well they're also ambidextrous that's sometimes well no i guess that even the, the side actual mechanism of firing true. the gun is ambidextrous true. even even the side ejection ones the ejection pattern is yeah. relatively you safe for you about it. yeah yeah so and again they come in solid solid calibers for 4570 is a thumper of a round. I mean, shooting yours those couple of times. Now, granted, those were high-velocity rounds, but you can get high-velocity rounds for those that will kick your rear. Yeah, they're toasty. They are, and man, are they fun. But it's just, it's a good good use of the space. Because for me, one thing that, that I try to think about when I'm thinking about like truck gun stuff is the usage of the space. We don't have that much space in our vehicles. So making sure that we utilize that space is a very important thing to me. And because they're thin, means you can put put them in different places or more places mm-hmm. or better places. So yeah, that's mine. Okay. I showed you mine. Show me yours. All right. My last one. Not that. Put that away. My last one, which you're not prepared for. Okay. It's a Norinco SKS. Really? A Norinco SKS with a... Now I'm going to take off the fixed 10 round box okay. magazine that's fair i'm not going to run the detachable magazines because they okay. jam yes they do so what i'm going to do instead is get the red star 20 round fixed box magazine okay it sticks down a little bit um but it is a fixed magazine you feed it with stripper clips just mm-hmm. like you do the 10 rounder but it gives you 20 rounds and if you can't find that you still have 10 rounds yep um the only thing i would change on that gun other than the um i'd like to do the red star mag if i could yep would be i would screw a picatinny rail to the stock up front so i could run a light <laughs> that's and you know what since you're not it, lights don't have to be overly accurate so yeah they, it just, just has to be there. On there and uh i mean the sks we i've said it several times now 76239 the viable round mm-hmm, 200 absolutely. yards sks it's not an AR-15. It's not an AK. I'm going to leave it Woodstock. It doesn't look scary. Yep. It's semi-automatic, 7.62.39. They're fairly reliable. Mm-hmm. They're 
accurate enough. I mean, they're as accurate as I'm going to be with iron sights, especially if I'm in a stressful situation. Yeah. Um, they're not overly heavy. They're not very big. No, they're not. Um, it's just a a good, well-rounded, put in the back of your truck, and, yeah. oh, man, did you know I had an SKS? I forgot about it kind of gun. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a gun that you're not going to be... Yeah concerned about I, I might toss in there too bouncing off of that a vz52 yeah um the, the only one that i would rule out would be a yugo sks because yeah. they have the grenade launcher adapter to them true um so they're an extra six or eight inches longer yep but luckily you can't really tell much so it's not like it's gonna look more scary no <laughs> okay it would just be the length of storage so my last one on our actual list here, because we do have some some others going on here. We'll be here. going first on the bonus. Okay, cool. So my last one here is actually going the complete opposite direction of yours. You went big, you went rifle. I'm gonna go tiny and pistol. Okay. I'm gonna go with a smaller gun, something like a Sig P365. You can dump in your pocket. Or a Hellcat, something that you can dump in a pocket and just will melt away. Or a J frame. Uh, you know what? I actually, I almost put a wheel gun on here. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I didn't put a wheel gun on there is because I couldn't, I forget about the hammerless J-frames all the time. Yeah. Like, because, well, just because. I mean, the 357 round, especially, 38 special is okay. 38 would get you out of a pinch. It, 38 it will. plus plate. Plus P out of a 6.42 or a 4.42. Yep. That gets you out of a pinch. It will. They're, they're, it's about 9 millimeter power out of this. Low powered 9. Right. I mean, it, it's it's not the worst thing in the world. I'll say that. Right. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with those two just because sometimes you need to get that little bit more concealability. Toss it in the pocket of your hoodie and put your hands in your pocket. Walk down the road. Yep. Yep, something simple like that, something easily accessible, something smaller, but still an adequate round. Notice there's not been a 380 on this list. Didn't have your carry gun, got a flat tire, have to walk to the gas station. That's that's another very good point is I've heard a lot of stories about guys who they just go, and I've done it very rarely, but you're just going to go run to the store yeah. and you forget your carry gun. Yep. What better than to have a backup carry gun with you in the truck? Now, again, if you have, for any of these pistols that we've brought up, have a holster. Whether it's a pocket holster for a 365, a standard holster for those, an outside the waistband, have a holster if you're going to have a pistol. The holster doesn't have to be in the same place. It doesn't have to be on the gun. It doesn't have to be even hidden. But have a holster as an option just in case. That's pretty fair. All right, so... That is my last of our regular ones. So what do you want to do first? Do you want to do the bonus, or do you want to do the don't? Because we do have... Whoa. Yeah, we my have bonus some. is a don't. Oh. I've got I've got both. So uh -huh. I'll go... Okay. So I'll go bonus don't first, and then I'll go with my bonus. Okay. Okay. So bonus don't. Some background to this one is there are bad choices. There are. And they can be made. <laughs> and they have been made, I'm sure, very often. There are just some guns that, especially, I guess, in the instance that we're thinking about, where you're stuck somewhere and you need to get from point A to point B without your vehicle, or you forget your carry gun. Obviously, the rifles aren't going to work in those situations. But, okay, so here is my bonus. Is a freaking shotgun. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't, don't toss, don't. Just don't. They're big. The shotgun is specifically a close range gun. Now, yes, you can use it out to, what, 40 yards or so? I mean, that's an... You can hit something at yeah. that distance. But that's a very limited distance. Even for pistols, that's a limited distance. And, again, they just take up a lot of space. The rounds take up a lot of space. In the same space as a shotgun, you can have a an AR and a pistol with three times as much ammo with those guns in the same space as it, I mean, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but still like I have a bonus bonus now. Okay. Um, <laughs> and this, this includes semi autos. This includes pumps. This includes, I, I know that sawed off double barrel shotguns are a temptation and they're cool. They are cool, but not good truck guns. 
All right, so what is your first bonus? My first bonus is the do not. Okay. And it is a specific gun. Okay. Are you ready for this? I, I, I it is the Mossberg 715 <laughs> Tactical. <laughs> Why did you specify the Mossberg? The Mossberg 715 Tactical is the Mossberg 715, which isn't a bad semi-automatic 22 by any means. Nope. Um, it's a, a fairly well-priced gun. I would take one over a Remington 597. It's <laughs> um, not saying much. I'd probably take a Red Rider over that. But, that's that's true. Um, the 715 Tactical is a 715 in a vacuum-formed <laughs> AR-15 looking stock chassis Oh, system. right, right. If you open it up, there's a 7, 715 sitting inside of there. Um, my reason for that is, like you've been saying this whole time, if you if you have a the room for a big boy gun, have a big boy gun. Yes. And second off, it's a twenty two, and it looks like a five five six. So that could get you in. You could be undergunned very yeah. quickly. And the seven fifteen tacticals are notoriously very unreliable. It's kind of going the complete opposite way of the lever guns that we were talking earlier. Yeah. Where they are inconspicuous and overpowered. This is overly conspicuous and underpowered. Yes, very much so. <laughs> I 100% thought that you were going to go with Tech 9s. <laughs> Dual Tech 9s. <laughs> Dual nines. Tech 9s. I have another bonus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your your last bonus is also a don't, right? My last bonus is a do. Oh, actually. okay, okay. So, my then I'm going to go ahead with my my do bonus. Do bonus, do bonus. Okay, so my bonus is a Caltech Sub 2000. Running again. Oh, wait, this is a do. This is a do, yes. Okay. Yeah, this is a do. My bonus do is a Caltech Sub 2000. I'm not with counting. With the Glock 19 grip. Yes, with the not Glock the 19. 17. Right. And I. that's actually one thing I had thought of. I don't like the 17 grip length because it reduces your options. Right. Um, now it doesn't pinchy me though. That's true. The now I don't. Pinchy. I would. I could see that. Now I don't count this in the sub gun category specifically, just because of its form factor. You can't fire it folded. Right. So it it falls out of that, but it is compact enough. It is versatile enough. It's reliable enough. It's. They are surprisingly accurate. They're very accurate and. There are modern ways to mount an optic to them. Yes, if you get it, one of those clicky, it's not ideal, right? But it, it's it works. It works. Yep. And it, but even the the irons that they come with are relatively good iron sights. Yeah. Or yeah. fixed sights. They're not. Iron. I mean, we could we could ring a half size silhouette at a hundred yards with it mm -hmm. very consistently. Yep. And you can get those in forty and nine. I would go with nine. I, but honestly, with that thing, I would kind of like to shoot a forty version of that. Because the 40 is spicy enough. Now, in this case, I probably wouldn't want the 40 That's just because... That's my concern, because 40 is spicy enough. Break it. You might be rattling it around too That's much. That's true. I wouldn't go 40 because of ammo availability and mag availability Yep. Uh, in this case. But I would like to shoot a 40 version because 40 is... 40 is better than 9. I'm As far... Ballistically speaking, terminal velocity... Round versus round. Yes. 40 is better than 9. I don't carry it. I don't promote carrying it. But the round does more damage. So see, when I said the Glock 19, I almost said Glock 23 with a nine millimeter conversion barrel as mm. well, because that opens you up to four guns instead that does. of two. Is that your end bonus? That is my end bonus. My end bonus is a Black Aces Tactical 14 inch shotgun. Okay. With a brace. But that's... reasoning, it is small. It is yep. compact. It is four plus one of 12 gauge. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have very limited range. Yes, 12 gauge is a very versatile round in which you can have very different types of ammunition. It is the only round in all of the guns that we have listed that you can launch a beanbag out of. That's true. So, it gives you options. You could just it, type, it, toss some sim munitions in the other one. It, <laughs> it's definitely not the most viable gun. It, if you laid all the guns out on the table... I would pick it up to shoot it. I'm not a big shotgun guy, but I right. would be really excited to touch it and shoot it and play with it. Um, but I would take almost every other gun over that. But a 12-gauge shotgun in the right configuration can be a viable truck gun. 
that's fair. Because those are considerably smaller than the standard 12 gauge yes. shotgun. Yes. All right. So you don't have, you're out of bonuses, right? I'm out. I am also out of bonuses. So with that, thank you, everybody. That was a weird inflection of my voice. Thanks, guys. That was, that, wow. Thought I hit puberty years ago. Apparently, I'm still going. So anyway, thanks, guys, for hanging out with us and going over our top five road trip guns. Remember, if you like this, please give us a follow. If you see this thing on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you are on YouTube, head over to your favorite podcast station and check out Leadhead's podcast on there. If you guys like what we do here and you want to help out a little bit, head on over to patreon.com slash Leadhead's podcast. And we don't really have any extra stuff over there, but we will eventually. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully you guys like what we're doing. So thanks one more time, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.